Yo, shout out to the most hot. It's always a high season when our lower state. It's LD's also known Lawrence the one for another episode I need to know. And I got my big homie, the other Lawrence. <laughs> introduce yourself, G. Yeah, I ain't even introduce myself. Y'all know who the fuck I am. I'm the, I'm, I'm the black sheep of Oakland. Who man, you know what I'm saying? Fuck, Mr. Fucking with Dank, Mr. Sex Money and Come up, Mr. come up a little closer. Mr. Sex Money and Mur Mr. Minutes of Society, Mr. Fucking with Dank, Mr. Out to the Bitches. You know, whatever you want to call me, y'all know what to do. You know what? I like to ask all my people that when they come on here, how they get their nickname. How did you get Pooh Man? Um, easy. I mean, my mom named me that shit. She said I looked like the Pooh Bear or Winnie the Pooh Bear. And motherfuckers, I mean, I ain't going to lie. When I looked at that little ass bear, his head looked at like mine. So, yeah. I mean, they got, I got it honestly. You know gotcha. I mean? Bessie gave me that name. Gotcha. Now, one time I, I watched one of your interviews, and you spoke on your mother. Your mother was an East Oakland legend, right? Yeah. Um, you know, my mom, my mama was a Panther, but my mother was from the 69th Village. Then we moved to seminary, and um, my mama became my business partner. And I tell everybody this, you know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing. Everybody, any, anybody from seminary who know anything, you say you from Sim, and you don't know who Miss Bessie is, you not from seminary, straight up. I don't know who the fuck y'all is. But, yeah, that's my mom. My mother was... Um, the lady who took care of everybody from the Dauphins to the players to whatever. My mama, you know, my mother was well-loved and well-respected. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, now I'm from North Oakland slash West Oakland. That's my side of town. North Oakland slash West Oakland. Yeah, I'm right there. It's really my own spot, you yeah. know, 39th and Martin Luther King. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, if the world blew up with, and flamed with explosives, I wouldn't give a fuck if it was nothing left but Oakland. Yeah, you know that. what I'm saying? That's real shit. That's but check it out, shit. though. Are you from seminary? <laughs> The village or the 70s? Everybody asked me this question. I was born in the 69th village. I mean, I have roots to the ville. Um, my brother and everybody, you know what I'm saying? My cousin Bruce Thomas was from 72nd. That's who started me really into this rap shit. Well, not started me, but took me further in it. I moved to seminary, you know what I'm saying? And I got family over there, the Gordons, the Pringles, the Hugheses, you know what I'm saying? Sean Ramsey, all, that's all my family. And then, you know... <laughs> I mean, it's just I'm I was I got a piece of everywhere in me, gotcha. but I I'm from 72nd, die hard, gotcha. Ever loyal to Big Bruce, seven dudes to me. No, Big life. Bruce was Big Bruce Spanish. Nah, Bruce wasn't Spanish. He was a big light skinned nigga with green eyes. Gotcha. He's a big rich light skinned nigga with green <laughs> eyes, and everybody, <laughs> you know, that was my that, that's my family. So everybody loved that nigga. So yeah. when I started rapping, it I started. And it was just me and my cousin, Wayne Gordon. We started on seminary and at my mother's front table with two radios, and we made Out to the Bitches with, you know how you put the radios together and one play the music and the other one record yeah. your voice and the music. That's how we started. Oh. And I gave uh, a girl named Christine. Everybody know who Chris is. I love you, girl. If you see this, you know I miss you. Um, gave her the tape. And Bruce, I didn't know she was fucking with Bruce. And she... Gave the tape to Bruce. I was fishing one day. I came home. My mama like, Bruce didn't call and been over here like three or four times. What the fuck I do now? I ain't done nothing. So I called him. No, what year is this? Like 89? Yeah, this is like 89. This is like 88, 89. And um, he say, um, bro, where you at? I said, I'm at mom's house. He said, I'm on my way. I said, I got to get in the, I gotta get in the shower. I got in the shower. I hopped out. I went, you know, when I got out the shower, the nigga was pulling up. Got dressed, went outside. He say, bro. Who the fuck is this? And he was playing out to the bitches. I'm like, that's me. He was like, who who you fucking with? I said, um, shit, Rick. I was gonna holler at Ricky G. He was like, you ain't hollering at nobody. Give me a bag, fifteen thousand in it. It's in the family. We that's how this. you. That's how you came in the game. I came in the game. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's dope. How I came in the game. My cousin wouldn't let me fuck with nobody else. You know <laughs> what? Now I gotta ask you about another individual. You know what I'm saying? Did I? That I hear that you tied to because it's it's great like in this rap shit that people mention people that are biggest part of they like like how Snoop mentions Lil Half Dead. Yeah. You mentioned Plan B. That's my heart. You know, what is your connection with Plan B? Plan wrote niggas ain't playing. Me and Pan co-wrote niggas ain't playing. But Pan um, Plan came in, we just started hanging around each other, you know what I'm saying? Because of my dream. Because he was a, we he all, was a yeah, dope he was, uh, he, graffiti he, artist. My dream and Plan started fucking with each other. And Plan was real political and real conscious with his music. You know what I'm saying? He was deep with it. And we was at the studio, you know, and he was like, 
let me co-write this. We just doing niggas ain't playing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what you mean you gonna write? He say, yeah, I wanna co-write it. So he helped me write niggas ain't playing, and he helped me write um, another song that I got sued for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but playing, you know, that was my partner. That's one yeah. of my diehard partners. I may, may may he rest in peace. He he became a legend and didn't. He, I don't think he even knew the impact he was gonna have on on Bay Area hip hop. I don't think he knew because like. What age did he pass away? At like 22 or something like yeah, that? Yeah, he was young. Pam, uh, Plan was like 21, 22. Yeah, he was young. Because didn't both of his brothers get killed too? Is Lil Bobby his brother too? Yeah, Lil Bobby. Hell yeah, Lil Bobby was, I thought Lil Bobby was going to be hella big in music. Because Lil Bobby, but Lil, I thought Lil Bobby was going to follow in playing footsteps. I did. He did. I, I mean, I, I party with him at Mingles. Rest in peace to Lil Bobby. Lil yeah. Bobby was cool as fuck. Yeah, that boy, I mean... They had a musical family, you know, his, um, I mean, it was a trip being around that whole family, you know, moms, dad, everybody. they really, that's a family that push plan, you know, they really, that family had his back in this music shit. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about what it was actually growing up, like, in Oakland way back in the day. Like, when did you first start seeing people get rich off selling dope and shit? Shit, 85. 85? 85. Cause people make it seem like crack hit in 85 and everybody was getting rich. Motherfuckers had money before that. You know what I'm saying? The powder was a thing before that. You know, powder and weed. Okay. And heroin, of course. Yeah. And um, so when crack hit, it was a different ball game. This shit was cheaper. You know what I'm saying? And it moved. When, once the motherfuckers started fucking with it, they started fucking with it. And it, the, the crack, had, that, that epidemic, bro, it was like, Niggas went from making probably 500 to 5,000 in, in a couple of days. You know what I'm saying? Crack was the shit. And then all of a sudden you see the motherfuckers my age, I mean, 12, 13, 14 years old, sliding around on clean ass. You know, back then we didn't have all. We went from riding beach cruisers to riding. Uh, what's Granadas. No, no, nah, nah, uh -uh. we didn't get to the Granadas. We went from beach cruisers. Then we went to the, the, the scooters. You don't remember yeah. scooters, huh? Yeah, mopeds. Then you had, you had the mopeds. Yeah. You had to. Paddling to make them start. Yeah, yeah. And then we went from them to we went to their sprees. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, niggas was riding cougars, Chevys, yeah. blazers. Niggas was out there. I mean, Mustangs. You know what I'm saying? And these young motherfuckers. Then you see in their neck. I mean, you look at their neck, and it's probably about back then, about 20,000 on the motherfucking neck. Nowadays, that 20,000 be about 100,000 because they had pieces. Yeah. You know, motherfuckers started getting rich. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying a motherfucker. Say hood rich. If you if you making twenty five thousand dollars a week, you hood rich. That's right. You That's hood good. rich. You did back then. Twenty five thousand was way too much bread. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you started seeing teenagers had this type of money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying it. It happened, bro. I mean, it just. Oak, Oakland was like, the blueprint for every other city around us. You know. I heard saying? that. You know. The testing ground yeah, or some it, shit like it that. It was like it was like if Oakland did it, if Oak and when Oakland did it. Other cities said, okay, these mm -hmm. Oakland niggas doing it. Yeah. We can do that. So it branched off. Boom. And then Oakland niggas started branching off too. Yeah. Because you started saying Oakland niggas fuck with Frisco niggas. Then Frisco niggas fucking with Oakland niggas. Then PA fucking with Oakland. Oakland mm -hmm. fucking with PA. It was money. You okay. Know what I'm saying? It was just money. It, it, man, it was a money thing. You, you can't knock a nigga if you're getting money. You want to follow the blueprint. You so I got to ask you a question because you was around then. I got two questions actually revolving the crack game. Back then, people used to smoke crack with a little bit of weed. Was that normal back then? Hell no. Nah. That was some other shit. That was for somebody. It was normal for some people. I mean, I never fucked with it. I never fucked. I, I mean, I've done shit. I've snorted powder. I mean, yeah. I've snorted hop. I've smoked weed. I mean, but I've never fucked with crack. I would never. I mean, that was like taboo. Okay. Okay. Because you know what, what was the, because people make it seem like it came out then. And people didn't know that it was going to fuck everybody up. To be perfectly honest with you, it was around before then. Huh? Keep it 100. What'd you say? That shit was around before then. Okay. Because people used to mix, they, they people used to mix that shit with weed back in the day. I remember, I'm not going to go there, but I remember people before my generation that did it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, it didn't just, it, it didn't just come with our generation. You know what I'm saying? It started before that. So you heard of crack before 85? Not crack. Oh. I, however they was doing the coke back before the crack came, they used to put it in weed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how they used to do it, but they, they used to do it. It didn't just start with our generation. Then you started seeing young motherfuckers in my generation that had, you know, fucked with something that was taboo. And I'm like, what the fuck is, what's that smell? <laughs> oh, man, I, 
bro, you tripping. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You start seeing motherfuckers my age. Fuck, I'm like, yeah, okay. You, you keep doing what you're doing, nigga. I yeah. ain't fucking with you. Yeah. Well, I seen what crack did to everybody else. I know you've seen a lot yeah. of chicks make that transformation from being super bad to. Oh yeah, I've, I've seen some pretty ass females at one point. Then they start. I seen. Some, I mean, don't not just chicks because I seen some hard ass niggas get on it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I seen it destroy their motherfucking life. I seen some of my partners that I respected, older dudes that I respected, get on it. And I've, I mean, I'm keeping the PIX that got robbed by two niggas that I respected. Respected. And these two dudes robbed me, and I had to go around the corner and holler at somebody and say, bro, you know what Wooty Whoopy Whoop did? You know what I'm saying? Um, he made, you know, hey, go get them niggas. <laughs> yeah. Bring them here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Here you go, Pooh. Whoop. But you niggas out of pocket. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, because that fucked me up. I was more, fuck, fuck three or four hundred dollars. I was more fucked up because it was two niggas that I really, really, really respected that yeah. did it. That crackhead motherfucker's tripping the fuck out. Yeah. Yeah. And is it true back in the day, like, you could be part of, like, 6 9 had, like, a, a cartel or whatever, whatnot, but you could not be from 6 9 but still be in the mob? I mean... Like, I heard somebody was... I think somebody was like, they might have been... Like, could a motherfucker be from Richmond but still be in the 6 9 mob? Could it be could be associated with the mob. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer it is, okay? This is my take. I don't give a fuck who you is. You ain't the mob unless you got that mob back in. If mm -hmm. you, when motherfuckers be like, well, you know, I can name the Brigham's, the Oliver, the Sneeds, the, I mean, the, the, man, the gays, the, I mean, I was born and raised in the mob. Yeah. I actually got to sit in the room with Felix Mitchell when I was a kid. At, he was, I stayed in 6706, Armstead, um, apartment A. My mama stayed in apartment A, Rosie stayed in apartment B. I, at Keisha's birthday party, you know, my, my neighbor, V came in there, he had on his pretty ass ice, I mean, his pretty ass honeycomb ring with diamonds in it, and handed out $50 bills to all the kids there at Keisha's party. Yeah. Now, that's mob. That's 69th mob. That's being raised there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? When other dudes come in and they get accepted by, say, who and who else, they are part of them. They can say they from the mob. That's why they changed it. They, ain't, they from LDI. They was from this. They was from that. I, I got my own take on that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now, you've been around a minute. You know, you've been around a minute. Are the youngsters worse now or then? <laughs> now? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was rules back then. It was rules back then. You know what I'm saying? I, the, the dudes that had it back then really had rules. You didn't do something that was out of line and didn't think you was going to get checked. Okay. Because there was certain dudes back then that really respected the game. They, they was like, you know, you wasn't going to go rob Miss, M M M Miss Lisa down the street and bring your ass back. You was going to get your ass beat because Miss Lisa been over here for 40 years. You can get your ass beat. You wasn't going to pull down the street and shoot up a whole block and hit hella kids and you from over here and you wasn't going to. You, police wasn't going to find you. <laughs> it, that wasn't going to happen. It was rules and regulations back then. You had to follow. So in retrospect. There's what? no rules. What year do you think that changed? Like 97? I'll say that changed when everybody got arrested. When them big drug sweeps and shit went down. When Duro and Ant and everybody got arrested. That's when everything changed. Because them, them brothers had, it, it was rules. It was, oh. People respected them. It was rules. You didn't do that. Yeah. When they took all of them off the streets. The structure was it, broke. It, it went fucked up. It yeah. got fucked up. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's still spots. Don't get me wrong. It's still spots like that. Areas. I can say around six, you know, around in the 60s, around 62nd, it's still rules to a certain, to a certain, you don't come over here with that bullshit. Yeah. But Oakland in a whole lost its structure. Okay. Okay. So when you first put out your, your first tape, that demo, and you had the 50, 15,000 in your backpack, mm -hmm. when did fucking with Dank come in after that? Uh, okay. We did the Out to the Bitch EP first. We dropped that first. It blew the fuck up. Uh, it, Oakland, um, what, um, Portland, Oregon. It, it, it went crazy in the, the cities and states around California. You know what I'm saying? It went nuts. So we said, fuck it. It's time for us to do Life of a Criminal. Let's do the whole album. We, me and Banks was in the studio. We, had, we was doing hella songs. I think 
Fucking with Dank was near the last song. The last song we did was Lex. Um, but near the last song, it was fucking with Dank. And we was on the way. Banks came and picked me up from Scoogee House on, on 72nd. And I heard this M2 May beat raw. I and love I'm like, M2 May. I want this. <laughs> I said, Banks, I want to do this. I want to do this. He like, what are we going to do? I was like, let's figure it out. We went up to the studio. We was at Blind Man Joe studio up in the Oakland Hills on Elysian Fields. And me and Banks played it. And we was playing out. Like, all right. So I'm going to do a weed song. Do a weed song. And at that point, I had started calling weed dank. You know, it had been just, it, it was whispered. We called dank. I was the first motherfucker who ever used that word on any fucking song in regards to weed. I did that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I did fucking with dank and we listened to it, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be it. So I'm loving it. Yeah. But somebody I know, I tell, yeah, my, my first wife. Told me it sounds funny. Uh -uh, they ain't gonna like that. Uh -uh, I will never listen to her. Yeah, yeah, never, yeah. Never. <laughs> so she had me feeling this certain hey, way at first. Me, Bobby. I felt you about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm not I, if I'd have listened to her, yeah. I'd have been fucked up because fucking with Dank became my classic. One of my classics. You know, D, You know. And Banks was like, okay, we got okay. This, okay, we want to play it for Bruce. Yeah, this is it. What? This the one. I let her hit. Nah. Oh. Okay, I'm not listening to you. So we we finally just said, fuck it, we put it out. And when the album hit, I left. When we dro dropped the album, this dude named Aubrey Taylor made rest in peace. He was a street promoter that used to work for Intermittent Records. He took me out. And we was in L.A. We was in uh, Pine Bluff Park. We went on a, like, a, you know, introduced it because it was the indie group then. That's right. I was a part of the indie group. They, they was, I was hitting all the indie places all around the country. I come back, Bruce picked me up. He like, come on, let's ride. We get in the car, bruh, and we sliding around East Oakland. Everywhere I go, fucking with Dag, I'm hearing it. Yeah. And that's East Oakland. We slid through North Oakland, fucking with Dag, through West Oakland, fucking with Dag. We got on the freeway and hit Frisco. Fucking with, I'm like, ooh, boy. He said, nigga, this is blowing the fuck And, and what year did you drop that 90, right? Yeah, no, 89. 89? 89. It's funny, though, because I had... You know what I'm saying? The homie Black C from RBL. I That's said, my boy. I said, when y'all came out with um, Don't Give Me No yeah, Bammer Weed, weed yeah. was that kind of your like your answer to fucking with Dake? He said, you know, Pooh, you know, that's my dog. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's my yep. partner. That's my partner. <laughs> he and G, that's though. My road dog. That, he cool. I, you know, we just uh, that we was part of the same thing at that point. That's we was right. Part of in a minute at, at that point. You know what I'm saying? That's my boy. And yeah. um it's, it's a lot of people who tried to answer me. I mean, it's like the loonies. When the loonies came with I Got right. Five on it, that was Yuck and them's generations fucking with Dane. It was. That was they fucking with Dane. And, um, but can't nobody take one thing away from me. I, Dank is mine. That yeah. word right there, that's Pooh Man word. That's right. And I started hearing it on Snoop, L.A., everybody using the word Dank now. Everybody. So every time y'all use that word, pay me. So pay check me. this out. Check this out. <laughs> check this out. 89 was a very pivotal year for Oakland. Yeah. Why? Because of the Battle of the Bay. Yeah. Coupled with You Can't Touch This in the, uh, yeah. that hat. How much do you think they're, uh, you know, Too Short put Oakland on the map, but how responsible? That's the Godfather, always. Is MC Hammer also really responsible for getting eyes on the Bay, in your opinion? Um. Okay, first, that's, that's, that, that's a question. Hammer, damn show is. I mean, Hammer, Short had the underground. When it came to taking it pop in that area, Hammer took over. You know what I'm saying? Short had the underground, Hammer had that pop shit. You know what I'm saying? But Hammer was taking it to a whole different level. Short, short is short. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. That's the godfather. He was all in the Hammer will tell you the same thing. Short is the godfather. That's right. You know what I'm saying? But Hammer, when it comes, that's the pop father. He took that shit the over. Pop father. That's the pop father. I like he that. He took that shit over. I mean, the fact that he my family, I mean, you know, I'm, that's I'm related to Hammer. That's my that's my cousin. So yeah, you know that, that's my. Brother. Hey man, but, let me you know do me saying? a DNA test. So, you might be related to my motherfucking nah, ass. Man, you know that's family. And I, I look at it like you know, you had two people, two people who really. I mean, if you want to go with just rap, because Hammer took it. Hammer had when you look at his number ones, it's not just in hip hop. It's in it's it's, it's not just in rap. It's in pop. It's in R and B. He got shit everywhere. That's right. You know what I'm saying. The slow song, I forgot what slow. Have you slow, seen her? Huh? Yeah, he did that. That motherfucker blew the fuck up. Hammer hit all kind of genres. Yeah. You know, short underground hip hop. That's right. Hip hop. Yeah. 
old school gangster rap. Yeah, sort you know, it up. it's funny though because I say that Easy. I always talk about who the most disrespectful rapper of all time. I go Easy and then Too Short, right? Because disrespectful, e uh, not e of all time. You mean back then, not now? Yeah, back then. Okay, yeah. You know, because Easy -E is essentially Too Short that sells dope and shoot <laughs> motherfuckers. You know, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I. Yeah, easy. I'm, I got to see uh, that was my boy too. I, I got yeah. to see Easy right before he passed. I came home from jail and I went out there for an interview. Me and RBL. Okay. Me and um, we went to go see him and he was on the road doing something. And we had, like two weeks later he was dead. Okay. I didn't believe that shit. That's crazy. But yeah, Easy. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. He was. I mean, he he's was still LA's version of Too Short the Killer. Yeah, he you gonna shoot a. Yeah. I mean, he's still gonna knock a Too Short. See, he gonna say the word bitch, and it's either gonna be disrespectful, but since it's coupled with pimping, it might be a pet name. Yeah. When <laughs> when he's, he say bitch, there's no pet name. Your you're daddy getting knocked out, and he still might shoot you, and then still drink a forty and ride off. Yeah, you're right about that because LA had their own swag. For sure, LA so, definitely had their own swag. So at what point? Did you meet too short? Like, did y'all start? I knew short before rap. I knew short before I started rapping. Okay. Me and short had a history before rap. Was yeah. you AC mob or something? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> always, baby. I'm, I'm, I'm always, you know, bang this. They don't see it. But nah, me and short knew each other. Me and short, it was. I, got, I like that. Short, I heard that. Me and short, me, me and short had a, and uh, uh, you know, I used to always go see him at house parties. You know? Yeah. Short was my idol. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And you know, it's, idols became rivals. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, short always, I can say this though, Short always back then encouraged me to do what I do. Yeah. Even when I signed with Dangerous. See, a lot of people, when I fell out with Dangerous, mm. you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm man enough to say that that was my fault. Okay, you know what, what happened? Um, money. Okay. Just say money. Just say money. Um, it wasn't Short's fault. Short had no control over it. It was a misunderstanding. Randy Austin was the was the demon in that. You know what I'm saying? Short had played no part in that. Um, it was lies being told, not on Short's behalf, but I always looked at Short because the only reason I signed with Dangerous was yeah. because of Short. Yeah, I get Short it. Short put me into Dangerous. He wanted me to, he, when Hub, when Dwayne Upshaw came and got me, I only signed with Dangerous because of Short. Gotcha. So it'd be equivalent to if I went to, let's say, your house because yeah. of you, yeah. and then let's just say Steve was doing something or something happened, yeah, I would want you to speak he was up the on negativity. my behalf. Yeah. Short, I don't even think Short understood what was all going on at that yeah. point, but I was just mad. I'm, I'm a street motherfucker. I didn't know the business. Yeah, and you I'd was rather, young, too. Yeah, I'd, rather, you know, I'd rather pick up a gun and handle it like that. I wasn't yeah. going to handle it no other way. Yeah. But it caused me... It caused a rift between me and somebody that I that I cared about, you know, that I that I I loved. I mean, I, me me and Hub, I, that was my motherfucker. I respected Hub before music, you know what I'm saying? And it caused a rift, and I didn't like that. And as I got older, I realized that I could have dealt with it in a different way. When I came home, well, when I was in the pen, you know, I had, you know, I grew up. That's right. Things happened, and I, you know, I had to think about certain shit. I could have dealt with things differently, but. I didn't, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I was a street motherfucker. I didn't know all of that. Yeah. But it all came down to me having to come home and say, you know, I could have dealt with that differently. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. I, you know, I could have went to short and tried to talk and find out what the fuck was going on instead of assuming this is what the fuck happened. Yeah. And that all that phone, all them songs and everything else was a angry ass, a angry ass teenage kid thug. Yeah. Pissed the fuck off because I felt niggas had fucked over me yeah you know what i'm saying and that was it you know what i'm saying me and short when i came home from the pen bro i i hub called me and said bring it hey come to open coliseum walk me straight in the room with what right in the vip section with short and them first thing short everybody else did was grab me and hug me you know what i'm saying you can't beat that that's right you can't beat that with a stick that's right Cause I know get in where you fit in. That was a song where they said some things about you or whatever. Yeah. But Only thing I was mad about with get in where you fit in was a motherfucker saying my mama pussy smell like the gutter. And I, and I responded to that in kindly. I let, I let motherfuckers know certain motherfuckers got hands put on them. Yeah. You know, you don't disrespect my mother. That's right. At all. That's you right. Know what I'm saying. But that song, yeah, I did some too. You know, I did some songs too, Yeah. but I would never disrespect somebody's mom. That's right. I never do that. That's right. When you disrespect my mother, you had that coming. Yeah. Fuck who you is. Yeah, cause I know I know how this music shit go. 
you know, sometimes it'd be like a popularity contest. Like if you if you ain't the motherfucker with the bag, then every you could be telling the motherfucker that uh one plus one is two. And cause you ain't the motherfucker that's the most popular motherfucker, then your word really don't count as much. And that could be quite frustrating when we all supposed to be men at the table. Yeah, and I mean they ain't they included certain people in that that should have never got in that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, rest in peace, rap and rhyme. Yeah. I, that's one of the things I regret most out of that shit was what happened with me and Ron because I had just met him a couple of months before I treated him. When I, I he came over to the album room and I heard him rapping, I treated him. And then the next thing I knew, they had conned this boy into being on this song. And it, you can take a dude yeah, and then talk, yeah, this we're gonna do a song about Pooh Man and he gonna be on a two short song, shit. Yeah, yeah. And he just gonna do it. He ain't, yep. gonna think, he ain't thinking that about this nigga the- Pooh Man is going to fuck you up because he ain't no rapper. That's he's a right. Nigga who talk good. Yeah. He is not a rapper. Yeah. So it happened. And I when I was in a pen and that boy died, that's one of the things I regret most. I never got a chance to say, little bro, I apologize. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Cause I really that was fucked up. Did was Diddly Dog, was he coupled in that beef too? Uh that Diddly Dog stayed away from me. <laughs> I don't know whether I I didn't even focus on him. I focused on Ron, I focused on Hisani, I focused on Banks, I focused on Short. I didn't focus on that Diddly Dog. Gotcha. If I would have, he'd have seen me too. But I wasn't, that was a different poo man. Yeah. I was an entirely different dude than I am now. You know, I met Sonny before. Sonny was pretty cool and shit like that. Because didn't he rap, uh, he used to rap about pyramids at first. uh, Before (laughs) he he was going. Yeah, he used to rap about a lot of other shit. He used to rap about that other shit. Uh, I I haven't had a chance to see him. Yeah. No way. I I wanted to apologize to him, but I've reached out to certain people. Y'all see him, tell him to holler at me. I said again, you see him, tell him to holler at me. I mean, what happened between me and his shit not happened. Yeah. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? But he was the one with the gutter shit. Mama pussy smell like gutter shit. You don't, man, my mother was yeah. a motherfucking gangster. My mother probably would have walked up on him and shot him in his face if she'd have ever seen him. Yeah. That's real shit. Anybody who know my mom know she did not play. Mm-hmm. Now, you just disrespected my heart and soul. Bessie Thomas was my heart and soul. My mama was my best friend. Mm-hmm. And the queen of my family. The matriarch. You don't do that. So... Yeah. Shit happened. I wish it would have never happened, but it did. And you know, like I said, I I, I didn't get a chance to straighten some shit out with some, with it. certain people. Yeah. You know, as far as me and short, a one day one. That's, That's right. Always gonna be. That well, you way. know, I mean, if me they see Banks, the video, a one day one. If they see the video, they know it. You know, yeah. shout out to Sonny. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying. I, just, I haven't seen him, and that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, his dad, me and his dad was hella cool. Me and those was hella cool. His dad yeah. was a, a a cool motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Straight up. Yeah. So. The dangerous crew. It had y'all stayed together. What we'd do you been, think? We'd have been the biggest motherfucking thing coming from California, period. It would have been like the Bay Death Row for show. Been, it would have been bigger than the Bay Death Row. How you, you figure? Because you look at it like this. At one point in time, Dangerous had me, Banks, Hisani. They had a chance to get the loonies. The loonies was, Chris took them to the dan- That's right. Dangerous. Okay, if the, if the big eyes and little U's wasn't there, they would have been there. Because Chris was dangerous yeah, at Chris, one point. Chris, hung, Chris was part of the dangerous group one time. And then they had Father Dom, Mr. Ill, uh, FM Blue. These are the biggest, some of the biggest names in Bay Area hip hop from back then. If you were a hip hop artist and you coming up and you see all these dudes signing this label and all of them eating, what you want to do? Go to the label. Thank you. Short would have been the biggest motherfucking producer out here, period. If all the big eyes and little U's and the things that was happening in dangerous. If you got rid of Randy Austin, you would have been back. But hey, <laughs> Short would have been a, a, a billionaire by now. He'd have been Jay Z. Yeah, he'd have been because Short no music. Short can, Short can make a song out of your A B fucking C's. He mm-hmm. can do it. Yeah, he knows music. So if Short would have, I think if Short would have stepped into what Randy was doing and learned it, Short would have been a better CEO than fucking. But, but AR, man, A and R, short would have been better if he'd have stepped into that. He would have had everybody. What exactly was Randy Austin's position? Too much. <laughs> Randy had his hands in too fucking much. Straight up. He had his hands in too much. I hate dangerous as like it is right now. Yeah, yeah. I hate I hate that dangerous ain't dangerous no more. I hate that there's no dangerous music no more. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. That- I would have came home on it, straight up. Yeah. If there was still a dangerous music, I would have swallowed my fucking pride and I'd have went right back there and I'd have said I won't back in. Okay. Long as Randy was gone. Yeah. If Short was at the helm, you fuck right. I would have went in. Yeah. Dangerous was 
Dangerous could have been the catalyst for something so fucking big because everybody wanted to fuck with Short. Short is the godfather of underground hip hop. No matter how you cut, I don't care if you're from Detroit, you're right. New Orleans, or whatever. Short is recognized for being the godfather of underground hip hop. You're Dangerous right. was a hell of a name. Dangerous music. Come on, bro. Short, short hatch. Short could have did that, bro. That was short. Ted Bohannon without Randy Austin and somebody else. It would have been fucking beautiful. Just saying. That's my take. I don't care. Yeah. Do you think that y'all could do a, a reunion album? I wish. I've asked. Me and Banks. I talked to Banks. Let's do a reunion. Me, you, hey, Oh, you forgot about Spice. Yeah, Spice. That's my nigga. Yeah, that's yeah. That's my motherfucker. But Spice was never part of Dangerous. He was just like a high affiliate. He was. So it was never. Spice was never part of Dangerous. He was like. He was like they little brother. You know, me and Spice was my partner before me and him went at it. Me and Spice partners now. You know what I'm saying? When I came out on the. When I came home on the first one. I went and found Spice. You know, I didn't reach out to everybody else, but I reached out to Spice. And I Spice was staying in um outboard me on ripping. And I went knocked on his door and I went in there and kicked it with him. That nigga had a jacuzzi in his bedroom, big ass video games. We sitting in the house talking. He came and he did the song with me on Fuck One Dang 2001. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's my motherfucker, you know. Yeah. And I remember you got that score in juice. Yeah. That yeah. shit was so motherfucking tight sex from your she, bitch. Yeah, money lady, right this up, lady punk. named Kathy Nelson came <laughs> to the studio and she was trying to get short song. She wanted that, um, so you want to be, be a, a gangster. gangster. And she heard Sex, Money, and Murder and was like, I want that. I want that too. I'm like, huh? This bitch ain't getting my song. <laughs> no, that's what I mean. She wanted it. I, the short was like, yeah, yeah, let, let her get it, bro. You can still use it on your album. I'm like, she, she gonna pay you. I'm like, pay it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pay it. You know what I'm saying? When I heard it, the part they played it on, I was eligible. That was the perfect part. For sure. To play it on. But did, do you know the history of that song, though? Nah. Okay. The, the song got put on the Juice soundtrack. Right now, there's a gang in, on the East Coast called Sex Money Murder Boys. Sex Money Murder Boys is one of the most violent street motherfuckers out there on the East Coast. They got their name from that song. <laughs> Well, guess they, what? If it's a documentary on YouTube with a dude say, they said, what did you get the name from? He said, well, it was it, this dude named N.C. Pooh was on the Sex, Money, and Murder soundtrack. We liked it, so we took it and we adapted it. To, that, that became our name. Yeah. That blew my fucking mind. Well, you know, if they stop doing that, you know what they're going to be doing? Uh, Fucking with Dang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then it's crazy because 50 making a movie right now, and he, 50's doing a project about the Sex, Money, Murder Boys. It's like he just did the one with BMF. Okay. He doing one about the Sex, Money, Murder 50, you better holler, bro. Yeah. You gotta holler. That's me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know I'm just saying. So how did you get that role in um uh Menace Society? Short. Okay. Short. And your name was Doc in Menace, right? Yeah, short. Short and them. Um, they came out here. They came to uh they came out here. We met him over in Frisco at this big ass hotel in Frisco. It was me, short, me, Randy, um, us. We went in there and it went down like that. You know what I'm saying? They wanted they wanted us in and out. They just wanna get it. I didn't go. I didn't even say nothing they told me to say in the movie. I created my own lines. Gotcha, dope. That's <laughs> it improv. It didn't sound right. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to ask you, when you uh, said that you was going to the penitentiary and stuff like that, when you was in the penitentiary, was you thinking to yourself, damn, hip-hop was saving my life? Nah. nah bro. I mean, it's as simple as this. I, I got into music because I, I like writing. I started writing poetry when I was 11 or 12. I like writing. I didn't I didn't look at hip hop like it was save my I looked at hip hip hop like it was another stream of income. You know? Okay, yeah. Um could it have saved my life if I would have devoted all my time to it? Yeah, it could have. If I'd have walked away from the street shit I was doing and but I didn't. So it, it wasn't saving my life, bro. It could have. It Got could've. You. Okay. Now there's an individual that you that another person that you mentioned, and I always want to know your relationship with this person. Who the fuck is Rossia? We ain't talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't talking about hey, watch this. Put, <laughs> fast forward. <laughs> nah, Rossia, is, Rossia was some. She was my first wife's god sister, and something happened. Now that she shouldn't have got involved with, and I got pissed off, and I made the song. Okay. Now I'll say you. I'll tell you this. None of the song is true. Okay. None of that song is true. 
that was, was she really that fine? Though? My shit was pretty back then. Okay. You know, she was my she was my wife's best friend. Okay. She was her god sister. Um, she was family, bro. She still is family. Mm -hmm. You know, I got pissed off and I made the song. None of the song was true. Okay. And did you get sued for that or something? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got sued. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they say all publicity is good publicity. Uh, 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 not when it come out your pocket. <laughs> not when you got to pay for that shit. It ain't. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I got so you know what I'm saying. Yeah. She didn't do nothing but spend the money on my ex, my ex, her and the kids and her kids and my kids. I ain't getting nothing, but she's spending on everybody else. Yeah, she yeah. she family, bro. Yeah. To this day, I mean, me and I see her talk. Yeah. She, just, she lived with me before I went to prison. You know what I'm saying we family. I mean, it, it was I me. Remember I told you about that little badass dude with the fucked up temper that was childish and yeah. street motherfucker? Yeah. That's him who made the song. Okay. I just got mad. Okay. I just got pissed off and made the song. You know what I'm saying? I, I Do I regret that? Yeah, I regret it because I see a good people. Okay. But she just got involved in something she shouldn't at a, with a person that was a different motherfucker then. Okay. Yeah. And do you still do music now? Yeah, I still do. I'm fit to drop my last album. Okay. What is it going to be called? Urban Legend. Urban Legend? Yeah. Urban Legend. You ever thought about writing a book about your life? Everybody keep asking me that. Um, a lady named um, Kathy Nelson from Warner. She's with Warner now. She was with MCA. She told me to write a book. I'm thinking about it. My, my cousin Stone, Sean Ramsey, told me to write my life. I'm, I want to do it. I just don't find the time. I'm going to have to find somebody to do it with me to write it. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm actually going to do it. Was you writing a lot of raps when you was in the pen? That whole Chaos album was wrote while I was in the pen. That Chaos Theory album. I, Banks did my first album coming home. Okay. Banks did that first Chaos Theory album. And when I came home, Banks was, me and Banks was in the studio. He did that first album. All, it's, all those songs, if you listen to that album, were written while I was in prison. Okay. You know, when I first met you, you know what I'm saying, at the Mike Dream stuff, yeah. I seen you, I knew exactly who you was, but based on all the shit that I heard about you on the street, I'm like, man, I wonder, is he going to take to me? I was like, man, let me just step out on faith. Let me say You this. was cool to the motherfucker. No, this is how they paint you. This motherfucker robbing Walgreens, poop whooping motherfuckers in the projects. This motherfucker doing this. Oh, shit, he'll pop your motherfucker in. I was like, man, well, let me just say what's up to him. The man, it's like this. <laughs> I was a, I grew up in Oakland. So yeah. I mean, from being in a village seminary, 72nd, Oakland. Not to mention, I used to spend some of my summers in West Oakland on Willow with my sister. I mean, um, I, I, a, lot of, a lot of shit is like urban legends. Like I said, a lot of shit never happened. But a lot of people made up stories about me. A lot of shit did happen. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, I Motherfuckers take what they want from the shit that did happen and they make paint me into another person. I'm, I'm a very approachable person. Yeah. I'm very respectful. I'm very articulate. I can talk to anybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As long as you never disrespect me, if you come at me sideways, you're not going like to like the response you get back. I don't give a fuck who you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you come at me right like you did that day, you know, I, we, we chop. And yeah. I, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm always gonna chop it up with a motherfucker who, you know, disrespectful with me. If you disrespect me, you ain't gonna like what you get back. That's right. That's just it. So in retrospect, I gotta ask you this question because I love to ask the legends this question. If you could have been on any album that you like, which album do you think that you would have wanted to be on? The Chronic. The Chronic? The Chronic. One or two? One. one. That's what I thought. Okay. One. Okay. That Any particular song that you wish you would have been on or just on the motherfucker? On it. Just period. Any song they'd have put me on. I mean, I'm a Snoop fan. I'm a Dre fan. Um, that was probably that album. That album changed hip hop. It changed the way hip hop was prevented. The, the, like the soul. Yeah. It had soul in it. It had, it, it, it was something else. Mm -hmm. You know, Short had done it, but he didn't do a whole album like that. They did a whole album like that. That's right. Dre changed the way hip hop was perceived and the way it was produced. Would you put that above um, Straight Outta Compton? That's the number one album. That changed hip hop? That changed hip hop. I definitely believe that. That was the album that changed hip hop. Yep. That's funny that you say that because I, I say Straight Outta Compton, that album, there's so many ripple effects from that album. Like a motherfucker like yeah. Bone Thugs and Harmony, they're part of that yeah, saga. That was a big album. Yeah. You know, Straight Outta Compton was a big album, but 
that chronic, that first chronic album, man, listen to it. Listen to both of them. Yeah. That changed hip hop. It changed the way producers produce. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It changed the way a person um, went at a song, when you get ready to write a song, or when you get ready to lay anything. That album changed the way, because if you, he set up, he set the bar high as shit. Mm -hmm. So you had, you had, to, you, man, that changed hip hop. That album changed hip hop all the way around. Okay, in your personal opinion, if the first chronic in Doggy Style by Snoop was a double diss, would that be better than All Eyes on Me? <laughs> Fuck yeah. 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 The funny thing, yeah. the funny thing. I don't want to. I, I I'm a Pac is my boy. Pac yeah. is my boy. That's I right. Love him to death. Rest in peace. The boy was a legend. He he he. The shit he did was was crazy. But yeah, it the funny thing, the, you would have had that one, and then you would have had all eyes on me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what had better music? 1991 to 95 or 96 to 99? 91. 91 to 95. 91 to 95. Is it close? Yeah, it's, it's close. But, like, those genres of music are gone. You know what I'm saying? I listen to hip-hop now, bro. It ain't hip-hop. Okay. It's, this is not hip-hop. The shit people do now, it has no bottom, it has no groove, it has no bass. And I listen to it. It's, some of it's cool. I mean, right now, it's two, it's two youngsters, three. Three youngsters that I listen to. Oh, no, well, now, can't say that no more. Because... I'm a little baby fan. Little baby, yeah. I'm a little Dirk. I'm a little Dirk fan. Okay. I'm a NLE Chopper fan. I'm a Rob Wade fan. And I'm a Moray fan. That's what I listen to now. That's what I listen to now. Because they have a feel of what we used to do. The storytelling. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I mean, the brother that I would have most wanted to do a song with. Mo three, he got killed. Mo three was. I wrong. was going to. Re I I know Boos. I was. I was. My intention was when I get ready to record this album, was to reach out to Boosie to get at him. Mo three was fucking incredible. He was like and fucking incredible. He was a thugged out Jamie Fox. You know, <laughs> I, I was gonna say he was like Nate Dogg and Boosie put in one person. Yeah, but he was hella funny too. Yeah. If you ever watch him, he was hella funny. He could have been, he could have did all kind of shit. Mm -hmm. He could have did movies. He could have did anything. He had a personality. Yeah. That that I like today I sit up and I watch this boy. I sit and watch YouTube just to watch this dude and listen to his music and watch some of the shit when he was just talking and clowning and shit. I his personality was infectious. Yeah. <clears throat> Boosie knew what he was doing. Yeah, Boosie is pretty funny too. Have you seen Crip Mac? Huh? What you say? Who was that? See what that say. <laughs> okay, that's y'all opinion. I love y'all, but y'all know me. I'm, I'm, I'm poo man. I'm gonna say what the fuck I feel. I'm not. We not talking about what y'all feel. I'm talking about what. I what feel. was it? What what they say? They said uh, some bad influence is the greatest group out of the town. Poo man is a legend as well. Raheem agreed. Y'all would be way bigger. And better than death row. Fuck yeah, I'm sorry. I feel you. I mean, I agree. I mean, bad influence the number one group out the bay, though? Nah. Well, you know what? I got to say something. Upon Rappin' Ron's death, nobody yeah. wasn't fucking with Rappin' Ron and no. Dilly Dog at the point of his death. No. I, on that, I agree on with that. that. I agree Hill? with that. I agree with that. Rappin' Ron and Aunt Dilly Dog didn't get what they should have got because shit happened. That's right. The biggest group out of the the biggest duel out of the out of the out of the Bay Area is the Loonies. I don't care what nobody say. True indeed. You look at you look at this. They came out their first album, plat, gold album, platinum platinum single. Uh huh. It's never been done. That's right. Never been done. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Check the rep. I mean, check the numbers. Yuck and them could have did way more. Could have did way more. But Yuck right now, for as a part of the Loonies. Yuck still does, Yuck do more concerts right now than anything. Okay. That boy be everywhere. Yeah. So, I don't, I, mean, I, I they, they would have been big. Yeah. At, they would have been big. Bad Influence would have been big. They were definitely underground. Yeah. Loonies knew how to make shit to play on the radio. 
I don't think they knew how to make shit to play on the radio. I just think that was them. Some the, the, Yuck is Yuck is creative as fuck. Yeah. I didn't been in the studio with Yuck. I didn't I, I didn't you know, if you listen to Yuck, I think I did like three songs, two or three songs with Yuck when I came home on a couple of his on a couple of his albums. It's a trip, bro. The boy I don't know. I I mean, and Dilly Dog and them would have been big. Bad Influence would have been big. But Yuck and them as Yuck, Yuck and them still would have been that group to beat, bro. Them up, the Loonies, the, the Loonies was a motherfucker, bro. I mean, I you mean, had they to had see them on stage. You had to see them on stage. You had to see them when they was doing big shows, not the little show. I mean, con- I mean, stadiums. Yuck and them was doing stadiums. They first album. Well, you know, they still had a gimmick too. With with bad influence, that was no yeah. gimmick. Yeah. They were just really rapping. Yeah. And and what and made Billy Doug and I'm gonna say that boy was um, rapping rhyme was so motherfucking raw when he came to freestyling. He yeah. was raw. You know, raw. and Dilly Dog is underrated because. Him and I Ron, heard, I don't know why he quit rapping. I think he, I mean. No, I don't care. I don't care. Just because your homeboy passed away, you don't quit rapping. You rap for him. You know what I'm saying? That's my take on it. Yeah. Bruce died. I didn't quit rapping. That's right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, you, it, it, you can't be a part of something, and just because one part but, passed away, you quit. But you, did, you wasn't in a group, though. You came out solo. Yeah. So that's the, that's the difference. I don't know. I wouldn't have quit rapping, bro. And I, I, I liked, I liked Aunt Dilly Dog verses after you know, I, I, I got a little older and I started listening to him. I liked his shit. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. And I had, to, I had to get over what I was feeling. Yeah, before yeah. I listened to Bad Influence but because, because normally, normally in a rap group, a duo, especially a duo, one of them can rap way better than the other one. With Bad Influence, they both was dead on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, so okay, you just said that Bad yeah. Influence, they was both dead on. If they was both dead on, why'd you quit? Because you know what I'm learning? In groups, people that be in groups, a lot of them ain't raw by themselves. I'm gonna well, tell you, I'm gonna tell you like this. Three times crazy is dope. Yeah. Keek the sneak is raw as solo as in a group. Keek. Bobby Brown is dope away from new edition. <laughs> okay. Okay. You I get what I'm saying? I, I can listen to a whole Keek the Sneak album. When Three Times Crazy was together, we all know. That Adrian man was the one. We looked at him as the leader. Yeah. Lit him up, light him up, hit him up, seek him up, rig him up, that yeah. shit. But when they broke off, Keek took off. Keek, Keek is just creative. He's a motherfucker monster. Sneaker Slider was a, he, is a he, classic. He, he is, he, there's nobody, that, there's nobody in hip hop, nobody, besides one person. And he, I, I always, I always wanted to hear a Keek the Sneak and Mystical song. Okay, I can always hear that. wanted to hear Keek the Sneaker Mystical song. I, I mean, they, that, I, that would have been fucking crazy. So, so I was gonna ask you this question. Okay, so you probably told me the answer, but I'm gonna <laughs> ask you for the general consensus. You riding from here to New York, and New York and back. Who do you want to hear whole catalog? Keek the Sneak and everything that he's on, or Jack and everything he's on? I can't even answer that, bro. I mean, I can't answer that. I can't answer that. Okay, because I like both of them. Okay. I would probably listen to Keek on the way up and Jack on the way back. Yeah. Because I love Jack. And Jack actually makes music. He raps over beats Shot A would sing to. Yeah. Hey, I know. I never. Get a little closer to the mic. I, I didn't get to meet. I didn't get to really meet Jack. When I came home, Jack was hot. Mm-hmm. And me, Fab, and all of us, we was downtown and we was outside of a club. And they kept saying, hey, Jack on the way. Jack for the pull up. Jack for the pull up. I was like, Jack? That's it. Fab, introduce me to bro. I, I mean, I was locked up. Get Fab. Okay. Oh, there you go, right there. I walked over to bro, and I sh- reached to shake his hand. He said, he looked back. MC Poop. Oh man, it's a pleasure to meet you, brother. And grabbed me and hugged me. Yeah. I. That was the last time I seen him. Damn. The first and last time I got to meet the brother. We talked for a minute, and the next thing I fucking heard, somebody had killed this man. Damn. I would. That's somebody else I would have loved to do a song with. Yeah, that fucked me up. Yeah, he was cool as ice though. Everybody tell me that about him. Everybody tell me that about him. You know what I'm saying? I would have loved to do a song with Jack. Cause yeah. now I listen to him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's just crazy. Hip man, these streets and hip hop is a motherfucker, bro. Besides you and Dangerous Crew, who is your other favorite rapper? We favor Father Dom, where I'm from. <laughs> who is my other favorite rapper? <laughs> Back from back then or now? Uh, back then. 
Scarface all day. Wait, what? Scarface. Scarface is in the Dangerous Crew? No. You said who was my favorite rapper oh, from back in the day. No, I'm talking about out the Dangerous Crew. Besides yourself. Sure. Besides him. That's the giveaway. Sure, of course, sure. You know, like Bad Influence, Ron, this, that. What? No, them dudes wasn't there. Okay. Them dudes wasn't there, bro. When it was a Dangerous Crew, it was me, Ant, and his Sonny, and Short. What oh. no other rappers in the Dangerous Crew? Them niggas came after me. Okay. They, they came after me. <laughs> so that that's the new string. Yeah, you, you want to talk about who was my favorite rapper back then yeah. from Oakland? Yeah. Richie Rich. Rich go crazy. Rich was my favorite rapper. Rich? Rich can Rich could twist any motherfucking song. Still today. Still today, Rich is a monster. And he just do what he want to do. He just so lax today. Let's go ahead and fuck around. He, he going to make an album, come out, and shit go a million plus up there, and he just don't care. Yeah. He Richie Rich. Yeah, he a natural so, rapper. He Richie Rich. Speaking of new rappers, right, I asked this, this OG, and I don't know if he heard me. I said, man, out of all the uh, rappers, <laughs> famous rappers from California that should have been on All Eyes on Me, who should have been on there? And he said, Mozzie. I said, nigga, Mozzie wasn't even born probably yet. Mozzie is dope, though. You heard Mozzie yet? Uh, I know who Mozzie is. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about his lyrical ability? I think he, it, it, musically, Mozzie raw as fuck. I've not heard too many Put motherfuckers like with a natural no, ability like that. Put it like this. Mozzie the, and Mozzie the closest thing to Tupac. I agree with that. He's the closest thing to Pac. And I give him that. That boy, I listen to him. He raw as fuck. He's the closest thing to Tupac. Yeah, I fuck with Mozzie. It was a time where this dude, he came and, ah, I know what you finished to say. I mean, my, my manager over here, it was a time where he brung he was going to get me to do a song with Mozzie, and I told him no. Yeah. You know? Okay. I told him no, I wasn't going to do you it. You know who else worked hella and hard, it's though? Before, it's this before, it was before Mozzie blew up. Yeah. But I told him no. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, there's certain things I will do, and there's certain things I won't do, and I have my reasons. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do I respect that man musically? Yes, he's raw as fuck. Yeah, because when I think about people that have natural ability to rap. Yeah. I've never heard no shit like that. He has a natural ability to rap. And it's his, it, it, it's his, um, what's Vernacular, right? vocabulary. Not, not, not just his vernacular, his vocabulary. It's something about the way, it's, it's something about the way he do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's something, it's something about, you know that. Yeah, that yeah, the swag. Do, his little <laughs> swag when he doing this shit is, it makes you, it make you laugh at what the, the nigga be, he be on. I, yeah. I give him that. Cause he, he kick a bar and I be like, he just said that. And then he off you know, to the next. And I'll be 100% with you. I'm from Oakland. Uh-huh. I mean, I have, I have, I'm, I'm an old, I'm, I'm, I'm an OG at this shit. Okay. I don't, I'm not going to get in the middle of shit. Uh-huh. I don't believe in none of that. If I, it, I'm a staple in this city. Mm-hmm. I would, I would never disrespect my city. Yeah. Ever. And for me to do a song with Mozzie and he, was funking with him, 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 and him. I would have got, put me, what the fuck you doing? And I'd be like, you know, me, I, I, I have a, I mean, what the fuck you think you talking to? I do what the fuck I want to do. So yeah. to keep myself out of that position, I just, nah, I'm going to leave gotcha. you alone. But you, you know what's alone. crazy? He put out like about 40 <laughs> albums, like in, like he up to like 40 albums, right? Including Boy, mixtape. You know who else is hella hard working? Shout out to my nigga, Jay Stalin. That's my monster. That's my little nigga. Yeah, I That's love Stalin. Say, when I came home, see, when I came home, all I remember when I come home is this little fat nigga running around without a shirt on, holding his baby in this hand with no shirt on. At the, uh, and I'm like, I love this nigga. Yeah, yeah. And I ain't even know He him. easy to love, though. Jay, he, he, shout he, out to Jay. He, 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 <laughs> he a, the nigga's a father. Yeah. He's a father. And that's what I loved about him when I first met him. He, me and him setting up chopping, and he like, and then he was like, Another love, TKO. Yep. That shit, I'm like, he won't even, I'm, I want that shit, I want that album. That, Cause I did a song, an a, a, a EP called Teardrops. I went and found that fucking, I went and found that tape for that little motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. I went and, and you still ain't came and got it, you motherfucker. But I went and found <laughs> Teardrops for um, Stalin. That's, he, 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 good, he, good heart he the type of mother, he yep. the motherfucker, he got a, he got a good soul. You, yeah. you can tell. And he just make you like, you know what I mean? Make yeah. you love his little fat ass. Now check this out. You got two Pac list now. Did you like that album? I like Pac. So okay. I like anything Pac did. What did you think about uh, Scary X's Ward to State? That's a classic. That's my, you see, it's, 
I, I'm always gonna love Scar though. That was my that's my heart. Yeah. You know, that was like my little brother. Scar he stayed with me. Okay. Start mom if you ever if you ever listen to Scar, he say something, you say Miss Bessie. Mm. Listen to it. He mentioned my mama and Bruce in the song. Scar he stayed with me. My mama fed this little motherfucker. My mama went and kidnapped him from his mama when shit was ugly down there and went and took him. And Scar he stayed with me for years, bro. That's like my little brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So of course. I, I I remember when he be when he got into that, when he left the house, when he left the house on seminary and we up at the Uhuru house, and he was up there, you know. Then Bruce went and snatched him and put him on the couch at Christine's house. You know what I'm saying? Scar, that's like family, bro. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to love whatever he do because he, what he said, what, he was wrong. Scar, man, some of the stuff he wouldn't even write. He would just do it in his head. And you go to the studio, and he got a whole song in his head, and he could tell you over and over. I'm like, bro, how do you know? You ain't even, you didn't write it. He was like, I wrote it in my head. Yeah. That was him. Yeah. You know that's my boy. I Man, Ward the State was a banger. But I love the Righteous Back Gorillas. You know, Answer Tracy and all of them. Tra you know, when Trey and them went to the pen, Tracy used to call me all the time. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. The ones my, I mean, I'm always, I, I love Oakland, bro. Yeah. Oakland hip hop was the, you know, was the catalyst for a lot of cats that followed us. You know, look around. You got dudes that sound, dudes that sound like us somewhere. That's because right. They, because they listen to us. Come on, bro. Yeah. Same. Yeah, Scar was my dog. That's what's your favorite? Brother. What's your favorite three times crazy album? The first one, Stacking, Stacking Chips. Chips. Stacking Chips. Did you like Real Talk Two Thousand? I like Stacking Chips. I like all. I, I mean, I like some of the. I, I like some of the later shit, but I love the, the, the Stacking Chips album was my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. Yeah, Stacking Chips. Okay, so when that last album coming out? I'm going to drop in January. I'm gonna drop it in January for my birthday. Know, I'm gonna drop that. I'm gonna drop my clothing line and my weed strains all in January. Oh, so you is fucking with Dank? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Still yeah, fucking I'm, with Dank? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is grad. I'm graduating because this. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna rap again, but I will never make another full length album after this one. I'll do singles here, guest appearance here, maybe, but I would never make another full length album. What's the weed strain called? Um, I got one of the strangers called Buddy. It's named after Bruce. Um, what's the other one? Um, I forgot. I, I, the, the, my boys, my, the dudes I got doing it for me in Detroit, they taking, they doing the strains and everything for me. But one of them is definitely Buddy. I wanted to name it after Bruce. That was his nickname. Um, I got some other dudes just doing some side shit for me. Um, over at Yali Bird, it's okay. another company. Um, just. January, uh, you'll be invited to the party, you, you know, because I'm, I didn't get to throw my 50th, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't get to throw my 50th birthday because of this COVID shit. So I'm going to turn Oakland the fuck up for this one. I'm going to do my 50th birthday in January. You know, I'm going uh, you know. yeah. <laughs> to do my 50th birthday in January. That's what I'm going to do. And you mentioned the clothing line. What's that called? FWD. F what? FWD clothing. What's that saying for? Fucking with Dane. Dane <laughs> Fucking with Dane clothing. For sure. Before we get out of here, tell everybody where they can mention you at. I mean, uh, find you at. Yeah, y'all know my Instagram page, Pooman72. Y'all can find me on Facebook. Always, Lawrence Thomas. You know, you type in Pooman, it'll take you to my fan page. But if y'all want to fuck with me, type in Lawrence Thomas. Um, Oakland. And I, I got I got to ask you this question before we get out of here. You know what always. I'm saying? Because... Uh, what are your favorite five diss records? Ah, uh, no Vaseline, a match and a little bit of gasoline. That's number one. Uh, get in where you fit in. Um, what else? Um, uh, I don't know, bro. I, I I like shorting them. I like to get in where you fit in. When, you know, it was about me. You can't do number love a song. But they didn't you. even really say that much about you I in know, that. Though. I know. They I know, didn't. I know. I they know. didn't. Because I mean, and I, then, um, <laughs> ain't no did. love. Me, ain't no love. The response. I don't yeah. know if you heard. that. ain't no love. Okay. Response. Um. Oh. Right. Um. Idols become rivals. By Rick, Rick Ross. Ross. Oh. Yeah, that's yeah. there. Um. I don't know. I mean, that's what I'm going to do. My five is Hit Em Up, No Vaseline, Ether, Wangsta by 50 Cent, and Dre Day. 
Oh, Dre, yeah, you're right. Dre, that was raw, too. Because he had a raw video. Yeah, Dre, that was raw. Dre, that was raw. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> well, I am LD. He's also known Lawrence and one, but on this one, I'm going to call myself MC. Yeah. Another <laughs> episode I need to know. And as usual, come on, you know what I want. <laughs>